Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Condo Insider. It's our weekly show done with in conjunction with Hawaii Council of Community Associations. Thank you so much for spending your afternoon with us. With me today, I have um, as my guest, I have two individuals, Roy Shishido with Surface Shield Hawaii, and we also have um, Sam with Almeida with um, Carlisle. Carlisle is the company that actually does the warranty for the product. So first of all, we're going to start off with Roy. Um, so Roy, um, Surface Shield has been around for about 15 years, and they're one of the major players in the marketplace for roofing. And I know you guys do a bunch of different roofing products, from shingles to the, the one that comes on a roll, um, and to um, and the, the liquid applications, you know, where you just kind of coat it with like that white stuff. And um, that now I know comes in different colors, but I kind of want to narrow in for condo buildings, one of the most frequently used or one of the ones that um, are being widely used now is the TPO, the TPO from GAF. So um, why don't you introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about the TPO product. Hi, my name is Roy Kishido Red Surface Shield Roofing. Um, yeah, a lot of condos now, they're getting, getting re-roofed or re-roofing with some type of single ply like TPO or maybe a PVC roofing type of material. Um, the good thing about TPO is a long-term roofing system. Um, it does help reduce temperature within the building itself. And, um, and it's a lot more economical in uh, installing in most, most times. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to install TPO. Um, this is just like a standard way and um, all these different ways of insulation and everything else. And depending on the design of the roof or what it is spec'd out for the project really would depend on the cost of the TPO itself. So what would be, um, how, how is that TPO applied? TPO can be applied um, a couple of different ways. It can be mechanically fastened with cap or it can be fully adhered with adhesives. Um, normally fully adhesives are better, better wind uplift and things like that. Um, it would be really depending on maybe the spec writer or after you meet with the board of directors who's involved and to come up with a game plan. So this is um, like a sample of the TPO product right here. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of got like a felt bottom to it. And um, I'm assuming because I the other what they call I, I just know it comes on a roll and you see the guy with the torches, right? So this wouldn't be the same type of method application. No, this is a fleece back, so it'd be adhered with adhesive. Um, so you got fleece back, and it'd be like 115 mil fleece back or 135 mil fleece back. What that really equivalents to is a, a 115 mil is basically a 60 mil TPO. And a 135 would be 80 mil. And it really depends on how you're gonna be installing this roof and, and um, the method or, or what you are trying to achieve. If you're trying to achieve some type of positive slopes to the drains, then you most likely would not be using a fleece back. You'd be using a reinforced type of TPO with a dense deck and probably insulation that would um, be tapered to your drains. So it really depends on the, the project and the situation that you're trying to achieve. So usually when you lay this project, this product on the roof, the existing roof has to be completely torn off. Um, if you go fleece back, you can go over an existing system, depending, you know, making sure that the substrate is um, um, no blistering, it has a real good pool test to it. Um, then you can go over an existing just to help to try to uh, control costs. And um, normally going over the existing would be kind of being your um, your, fire, your fire barrier also, yeah, in a way. So it really depends. Um, if you're doing condos, most time it's gonna be done to code, especially if you're doing an old condo. So you're gonna probably do some type of installation to get the art value. And then you're gonna do a recovery board and then a TPO on top of that. And under all of that, you're probably going to be doing a temporary roof while you're roofing it so that it doesn't leak into the, the facility itself. So when you actually go to a site visit and you look at the existing roof, 
you're also examining not just the, the not just the, the roof. I mean, you're looking at where there's existing ponding problems. Um, also, if the water is being sloped till it goes off the roof, <clears throat> and you're also going to be looking at their drains if they have drains that lead into gutters. Yes. And that would so be necessary. basically looking for positive slope to, to the drains, or if it is sloping to the ends, if you having a nice positive slope to the ends, yeah, so that you don't have no um, sitting or standing water. Uh, every every flat roof will have some type of standing or sitting water after rain. Uh, what you don't want is ponding water, and ponding water is something that stays there every day, all day long, twelve months a year. <laughs> you know. But if it because dries people, up within X amount of time, that would be okay. <laughs> yeah. So if it dries it. up within, um, you know, 24 to 36 hours, in most times after the rain, um, with it's most times within the warranty. Okay. Um, so in that, that time, you'd also be examining or at least letting, like say we're dealing with a condo board, you'd be looking at their drain slopes, making sure that that drains into, if they have a gutter, like a gutter system, I would assume, that most of them will have a gutter system, making sure that that gutter system is in order. Otherwise, you might need to have the board consider that they need to fix their gutter system or their drainage. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that there would be a really good examination of the roof and the other components of that roofing system, right? Yes. So at times, we would even core the roof, the existing roof, to core it, to see what the composition of the existing roof is at that time. And that way we can tell if it's already been sloped or not sloped. Um, it'll tell, tell us some stories about the roof for, to ourselves, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if the, um, what if the building, because some of these condos have like, um, you know, like the um, cell towers or they might have PV. What happens at that point? Well, if you're doing TPOs, um, they have special boots that will waterproof around the penetrations. So PV, they have, uh, pre-made boots that can go around the penetrations, or you can also um, prefabricate boots on the job site itself, depending on the situation. What about the cell towers? Same thing. You would cell towers. You probably probably uh, modify it at the at the uh, job site. Okay. Okay. Um, and what about maintenance? The big thing because we, we maintenance. We, we, okay. With, with with costs going up, you know, and maintenance fees in that equation, how will TPO be able to possibly maybe on their reserves, like they can extend it life a little bit longer? So how can a board try to get a longer life? By okay. Well, with TPO itself, it will last longer than a natural or a basic modified vitamin roof itself, the granular ones, the raw ones that you were saying. So off the bat, it will last longer than that. But to maintain it, you should make sure that the drains are always cleared off from vegetation, nothing growing in that, so that roots cannot get into seams and uh, break down the roof. Um, you want to make sure you check the flashing and detail areas on the roof as it ages to make sure that nothing is opening. And if it's under, under maintenance, you would look at those things and you would do those uh, repairs as needed. Drain wise is usually up to the uh, condo association maintenance people to make sure they have it on a program to be checking those drains and also to have it on a um, like an emergency storm uh, situation where if you know a storm is coming like a hurricane that automatically all the drains and gutters get pre checked prior to the storm coming so that you don't get no. Uh, excess overflowing in your gutter system that gets into your roof and, and everything else. So what if you they find that there's mold growing on the roofs, you know, like would they just pressure wash it or do they apply a detergent to it? To get rid no, of it? Normally you would just use water, pressure wash it with water. Yeah. Okay. But no chemicals. Yeah. You, you don't want to use too many chemicals, getting it into your drains, into the grass, into the environment. Um, yeah, you try to keep it more green as possible, yeah. And then I think I was reading somewhere that this product is LEED certified or something like that. Can you tell me a little bit more about, about that? There's some buildings trying to be more energy efficient because I think the sun lowers the temperature or something. Yeah, because it is white, right? So it does reflect. And um, that's why if you're doing an older building and you're trying to do it too cold, you're going to put in 
all the necessary installations and everything to to uh, achieve your um your your R factor. Okay. Because it'll give you some it, it'll give you some value no matter what. But if you're trying to get it to cold, then you gotta add in for you know insulation to get the actual R twenty or whatever you, that you're trying to achieve. Is this LEE lead certified? You know those people that are trying to go all. I can jump in there. Okay. Yeah, let him answer that. Let him answer that. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, lead uh, is uh, is for an architectural type of uh, systems, and it's more designed from the ground up. So typically, that would be more uh, for projects that are typically new construction, where they're trying to meet a certain level of environmentally friendly type of materials and installation. So uh, LEED is just uh, an organization uh, where they're trying to go green. So in most condo uh, applications, because there's re-roof, uh, you wouldn't typically apply for LEED. It'll be more for new construction, uh, where it takes into consideration where the products are manufactured, if they're recycled, uh, how much energy saving. So it's a little bit of a complex program, but yeah, that's more reserved for the new construction types. Uh, what your homeowners or condo owners are going to be looking for is basically like uh, Roy had mentioned the R value and what R value is is reduction in uh, uh, temperatures in in the interior building. So you want a high R value and uh, reflectivity, uh, and that's typically represented with SRI, which is a solar reflective index, and that uh, basically reflects the the uh, heat coming in from the exterior of the building. So those. As condo owners, what you want to look for is a, a high SRI or reflectivity and a high R value. And the R value comes from insulation. Uh, the SRI comes from the reflectivity of the membrane. So the person that's on the top floor will yes. get added benefit with this product because it might lower that temperature down. Since yes, the top it's off floor. But if the your building's air conditioned, like uh, some condominiums are, uh, you know, they condition the, the whole building or at least the hallways and that, then everyone will benefit there because you're reducing the, the load on the air conditioning. Okay. But uh, also, yeah, like you mentioned, the buildings that don't have fully air conditioned, yeah, it's only the, <laughs> the top homeowner really <laughs> reaping the benefits. <laughs> so I've seen that happen. <laughs> so Roy, how many, like, how long has TPO been around? Well, people have been around for a long time, you know, it's probably into its fourth or fifth generation already, you know, they just keep making it better and better. Yeah, um, I can give you a little bit of history yeah. on it. I, I think it's pretty interesting. So the TPO actually, um, you know, for, for the for the older guys. So if you remember, uh, when you were young, the P, the dashboard on your car, it would be cracking. Mm -hmm. and that's because they used to be PVC. And the PVC will crack. So they changed that. And uh, the car manufacturing industry came up with TPO. The TPO started off in the car manufacturing industry because it had good UV resistance. And then someone said, hey, we should put this on the roof. So they started doing it on the roof. So that was about roughly 30 years ago. So it's been around for around 30 years. It became really popular about 20 years ago. So uh, it, it's uh, had a pretty good life cycle. And that's sort of like, uh, you know, you don't want to do a sort of system that's been around 10 to 20 years. So it's gone through, like Roy had mentioned, like a couple of generations already. And so that's why it's become more popular. Well, I had checked out the website um, for this part, for the GF website. And um, are they still doing testing? Because they have certain buildings that they're actually, um, that they had put this product on. And right. after so many months or years, they've actually gone back and retested the product. Correct. for its durability and its tinsel strength and all that kind of stuff. Is that project still ongoing? Yeah, they've always doing these testings and they're called, uh, they do them out in these big farm areas where they have membranes set up and they're taking constant measurements. And so they've had a couple of different tests. I know the Midwest Roofing, uh, uh, Roofing Contractors Association, they had one and that's got a pretty good, interesting report. And like uh, Roy had mentioned, uh, there's TPO and PVC. Those are the two type of thermoplastic membranes that are out there. And so they, and there's a couple of different variations of them as well. So each manufacturer, they're trying to differentiate themselves. So some might uh, add more uh, certain different types of the weathering packages. And so they're just trying to, um, trying to figure out, you know, which one lasts and 
uh, what they claim to do. And also all the manufacturers are required to meet uh, ASTM, the American Society for Testing Materials. So they have to meet those minimum requirements. And so some manufacturers, you know, they go above and beyond because, you know, they have their, their uh, R&D uh, that recommends, uh, you know, to go this route. But uh, recently, uh, about probably about a, 10 years ago, they did see some deterioration on membranes because, as you know, building uh, designs change a lot. And what they found out was there was deterioration uh, that was uh, not planned for. And that was because a lot of buildings nowadays have a, have a lot of um, windows. And so you see all these new high rises. So uh, a lot of the TPOs were getting extra reflectance from the actual windows and they were burning up the membrane. So, you know, they've gone and revisited and say, well, what's causing all this? And they, you know, they do these studies to try to find out, you know, what, what's happening here. And so they found out that's uh, some of the new challenges that come up with new building designs. Wow. The way yeah, it's pretty fascinating. It's really scientific, and I could probably talk for two hours. But <laughs> I don't think I want to bore everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Roy TPO is really more for what kind of what kind of residential or um, condominium properties? Like you can't just put it on any kind of roof, right? It's going to be for a uh, low pitch, flat type of uh, situation. So like anything with a, you know, like that. Yes, anything less than, uh, say, anything less than a 312 pitch, you would normally put a membrane on it. So you're like low rise townhomes automatically out of the picture or pretty much, right? Uh, low rise townhouse with a very low pitch, you would put that on there. Anything with a pitch less than 312. Okay, so what is meaning 312? That is, meaning it's, you know, three inches per foot on the rise on the pitch. So basically anything under 312, you would do some type of membrane type of product. Okay. Uh, can anything. you think of any con any townhouses around that would, what that, as you can think of in the short time? Um, Cause I only think of- Yeah, you know, the only, most townhouses are, are fairly pitched, yeah. So yeah. Um, I wouldn't really say there's one out there. Um, it's either going to be a flat old concrete building or a um, a roof with uh, you know a slight uh, slope to the drains or something, you know. And not a um, bunch of the townhouses, like towards more on the older side of Middle Lani, a lot of them have those flat roofs. And sometimes you get a mixture. You get where you has the pitch roof with the shingles, and then you has some flat roofs like for uh, breezeways or garages. So sometimes you see a mixture of those. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so a little bit more um, about how the material gets applied. Okay, the way they get applied, like I said, there's basically two different ways. One, it's going to be either mechanically fastened to your substrate, or it's going to be fully adhered with adhesives. So um, adhesives are always stronger, you know, they get better wind uplift. Uh, it depending on the substrate, yeah, and um, I guess and economics. Okay, so let me ask about the adhesive. So how long, what is the life of that adhesive? Because as you know, one quarter of my roof kind of like lifted up. And when I, <laughs> when I check, they go, yeah, sometimes the glue gets delaminated, you know? So I'm like, yeah. okay, so now how does the, how long does that adhesive last? Well, that was, I would say it would last the lifetime of your roof versus a modified vitamin. It just held down with heated tars or um, self adhering surfaces that will break down over a period of time because they'll dry up, the resins will dry up, and then the adhesives will give way. Um, the adhesives that are used for roofing materials are, I mean, they don't break down. They're there forever, pretty much. They're, you, can't even, you can't even separate it, you know? Um, yeah, I, I would say last the duration of the roof until the day that you're going to be roof it. I've never seen a TPO that's fully it. I hear delaminating off the roof. Okay. Yes, right. the the adhesives are there, there's a couple of different types. Uh, there's one like a contact cement, and so that's very high adhesion rate. And like Roy says, it does last the lifetime of the roof. And then we also on the fleece back membranes, uh, they're like a urethane type, 
of adhesives and as uh, in, in the industry, urethanes are one of the best adhesives around. So they have a pretty good lifespan and uh, typically uh, give a life cycle of approximately around 30, 30 plus years on those type of systems. Okay. All yeah. Right. And, and, and if, then, if it did delaminate, it would still be covered under warranty for what, if it did for, you know, the worst case scenario, right? Well, yeah, it depends on the type of warranties. And I was talking to Roy about that. So uh, what that's one thing that uh, you know, condo owners can understand, but it can be a little bit dizzying array of different types of warranties that manufacturers um, offer. So uh, when you do look at a warranty and on a commercial property, that this, this is different from a residential one. Uh, you're looking for uh, what they call a full system or total system warranty. Sometimes indicators that NDL or no dollar limit. And what that means is they're going to get a warranty that covers any, um, any sort of uh, defects in the material, the application, the adhesion. And why they call it a total system warranty, because it's not just the top surface, but it's the glue, the insulation, the screws, and it covers everything. So, you know, in that case, if you're going to get that total system warranty, you're going to have uh, the manufacturer support it because they provided all the components of the system and they've had long-term testing with each component. So it's not like, you know, you're getting the membrane from manufacturer A and the adhesive from manufacturer C and the insulation from yeah. someone else. It's just all one system and all warranted by the manufacturer because they have these systems work within conjunction with each other. And so there's no uh, dissimilar materials. So that's what's important, uh, having those components that have been tested and, and tried and true. And then you're going to get a warranty that's worthwhile. If you're just going to get a warranty where it's just material only warranty, then they're just uh, basically warranting the fact that that membrane uh, will last X amount of years. And if there is a defect, uh, they'll replace the membrane, but they won't basically cover any defects related to adhesion or any uh, moisture intrusion and uh, workmanship. So those are the two main types of uh, warranties out there. Okay. So Roy, um, let me talk a little bit more about OSHA. So every, your company, all your employees are trained about OSHA. So um, who actually oversees the project when they're on the job site? Because there has to be a level of comfort with the board and everybody that these guys are wearing their appropriate gear. Um, and um, so what kind of training does your company use? To make so sure we always have a forming on the project. Uh, we always do a pre-site of the project before we start, so we know what we're getting. I mean, getting into. Uh, we also have a safety officer that will come to the uh, job site to make sure that everybody is harnessed in and hooked up properly and following all OSHA rules and regulations. So we do monitor those things, um, and we monitor that pretty strictly. So uh, we have somebody that checks out the project every day. Is there an inspection done? Um, uh, well, I think I'm leading up to the warranty, but I don't want to go too much into it because Sam's going to be on another segment. Yeah. Uh, during the, um, the application process, is there a check to make sure that the application is being done correctly to make sure that it's, you know, according to the manufacturer specs and also making sure that, you know, is being according to the warranty and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's being applied correctly, not just yes. glue and put it on. Yeah, yeah. So we do pre-site, uh, we do safety monitoring, and we do uh, post inspections when the job is completed. So on T field, we'll be picking all the intersections, picking on the patches, the T joints, um, all of the um, accessories or or protrusions or anything on the roof. They will be doing a pick test on it to make sure everything is um, fully adhered to the roof. So we do check our work before we're done. We don't just go, we're finished today and we're off the roof. <laughs> uh, there will be an inspection before before everything is closed up. Okay. So like I said, we do a pre-site and we do a post inspection. Okay, so I think we only have like about three more minutes. Any other words or advice you have, Roy, that you wanna give to your boards? Well, I think, um, you know, TPO is the way to go on most condos nowadays. Um, you know, modified bitumens was the thing of the past. 
you know, they only last between seven, eight years and you need to do some type, some type of maintenance because the granules are starting to fall apart on it. Um, there's a lot of seams on them because they're only three feet wide versus TPOs can be, you know, six feet wide or maybe even long, wider at times. And um, so, you know, and overall it's a lasting, a longer lasting product and it's cool right off the bat. You know, you don't have to go try to coat it to try to make it cooler. <laughs> and um, and like for instance, you know, I'm gonna say about Carlisle, you know, Carlisle, um, they're one of the, I think one of the few or only TPO companies that have a puncture resistant warranty. Right. So if something did puncture the membrane, you know, they would give us the the, the patches or whatever to go out there and, and repair it. Yeah. You know, so um, I think that's a really good warranty. Yeah, yeah that, that protects the building up. Yeah, because, yeah. um, you know, hurricanes, things get blown away, right? So that could easily mm -hmm. puncture the yes. surface. So that yeah. would be that would be a benefit. And And again, it's a maintenance because after some kind of storm like that, any kind of heavy, windy storm, um, they, 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 the roofs need to be checked yeah. for, for that kind of stuff. Um, so what's great. important to note, really, too, is that, uh, you know, Carlisle, they have just a, a handful of installers that are approved. So to get those high-end warranties, they have to be a reputable company like Surface Shield that's been doing it for a while and that uh, they have been vetted and been trained. And, uh, you know, once you have that combination there, then you're pretty good in terms of what roof system you're going to get. Okay. Okay. So I think we're nearing the end of our time. Um, so I really want to thank both of you, Sam and Roy, for being on the show today. We are going to follow up on our net, on one of our another future segments with just Sam to talk about just the warranty, uh, because there's a lot. I mean, just a few minutes I talked with you the other day, I'm like, wow, there's more to a warranty than I thought. Right. <laughs> you know, I go a lot more. I was like, wow, there's a lot. And right. I think that's going to be important for boards to know about these warranties. Because yep. um, as we know, there's been a roofing, major roofing company that condos have always used that is now, now out of business of the roofing, um, right. roofing industry. So yep. that's affecting some people that had just recently got their roofs done and now they have no warranty, right? right. So um, I think um, boards now need to look at not just the product, but also the warranty right. that can help to with some of those, you know, like product defects and, you know, that because it'll, it'll, I think it'll, the long term over the life of the product is eventually could save them money if they really follow the right things. Because um, you know, nobody likes maintenance fee increases, but, you know, it is what it is. And I, I know there's going to be massive increases over the coming years with just a lot of things that's been going on because of the Florida collapse. And now we have the fire department things, the life safety evaluation. It's, it's, it, it's a heartache. It's a heartache <laughs> that we all don't want to think about, but it's the reality. So um, thank you again, everybody, both of you, you for being on the show. Thank you. Um, nice to see your faces <laughs> versus email and phone calls, you know, right. um, and we'll um, follow up again. Again, we were going to have um, Sam on another segment in a couple, couple of weeks that will just be on warranties. So thank you both of you. I really, really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy days to do this Condo Insider and to educate our condo boards. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.